name's Joanne Hasty, and this past weekend was the East Side Culture Crawl. And I thought before I pack up my studio from looking like an art gallery and back into a art studio, I would give you a quick tour of what I did. Now the East Side Culture Crawl is a really big event in Vancouver, and there's about 500 working artists in this area, the most artists per capita in all of Canada. And we all open our studios for a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the total time adds up to about 26 hours. And if you tried to see every artist during the culture crawl, you'd only have about three minutes per artist. So I'm gonna to try to show you my space for three minutes. I'm gonna challenge myself to, to go through this quickly because I could talk a lot about my art. Um, but likewise, since you probably didn't see my space, I wanted to share it with you. What we have in front of you is one of the displays I was doing. This past year, I've been working on um, a robot that can paint, and here it is. So it's currently painting a floral still life, like this one. This is what I programmed for the 2018 Robot Art Competition and ended up in fifth place. So the whole demonstration takes about three hours. I chose this one for the, the crawl, so that way it could keep painting and I could keep um, talking to people coming through. So um, it was a lot of fun to watch people get hypnotized watching this, this robot paint along. So while it's painting, I will show you what's behind me. Um, behind me is a series of uh, abstracts that I created with the robot. The robot's currently limited to a six inch by six inch space. So I was taking advantage that a, you can program random numbers into it, and therefore it's, it's selecting random colors, random angles, random length of brush stroke, and random number of brush strokes. So they're really fantastic color studies that um, they would always come out as unexpected for me because I was using the randomness. The other thing that I wanted to share is behind me I have my very first robot painting and when I painted that I had no idea what, what it was going to paint. I actually had random numbers and it just connected the dots. So it's really fun to see how far this project has come. Now I'll move you guys over a little bit. These were the still lifes that I did with the robot that I just showed you that it's painting right now. And what I, I did for this series, I call it 412 brush strokes because most artists don't get to know how many brush strokes are in their, um, in their paintings. So I thought I would have some fun and actually give you that number. But each one of these is the identical painting, just a different colorway. By using the robot, I'm having a lot of fun going away from my realism, really focusing on color and the mark making. So this series is one of my favorites that I've done so far with the robot. So the series behind me is what people know me better for. I paint impressionistic um, landscapes and cityscapes. So I thought I'd sneak some of this in here, even though I'm getting really excited about um, technology and abstracts. And so the series over here is the Varley Trail, which is a trail in North Vancouver, and the series here is Iconic Vancouver. I'm a runner. When I'm not painting, I am out training for marathons or on my bicycle. So I collect all of the images that I paint. They're all my photos. Um, I feel really strongly about that, that I want to paint what I see, and these are the series that um, came out of that. It was actually a last minute ad to add the Varley Trail, and I'm so glad that I did. And, I hadn't shared it with anyone before in public, and nine of them sold, so um, I'm really excited that they found good homes. This series here, um, mostly from Stanley Park, and um, a couple pieces had sold of the views from Stanley Park, so it's always fun to connect with people and find out their story of, of how they spend time in Vancouver, and it's often at Stanley Park, which is a gorgeous area of Vancouver. So let's keep going. This was a lot of fun to share. People make assumptions that robots know what they're doing. They actually have no idea. This was my robot mistake wall and I created it to be able to have conversations with people that um, how difficult it is to actually program a robot to paint. One of my favorite pieces to share was this one here. Um, I had actually started up the robot and then went out for a run and when I came back um, I realized I didn't turn the flag on to clean the brush. So the robot had kept dipping into paint and not cleaning the brush off and you, you kept collecting more and more color until it was turning black. So that was a really interesting one. I also, if you watch me on YouTube, you would have seen this um, paint by number being created. 
um, I'll put the link below. The other series I was showing was my machine learning abstracts and these are I'm most excited about, most artists are usually excited about their latest series. So this was the source for the next section that I'm going to show you. Um, I created a piece of Python software that extracted these shapes and then collaged them together and would put in color palettes as well as um, just randomizing the composition. So let's turn around so you can see that full series. So this was a lot of fun because it was my first jump into abstracts by hand and I've always wanted to do a color field series. So all of these were created by the computer but then painted by me. So it was a lot, it was very freeing to be able to just come to the studio, especially when it's a new studio, and just paint and experiment and um, focus on the creation of art and not worry about what was being created. And I'm going to show you a couple of my favorites. So this one here was a fun one to share during the crawl um, because after I painted these, these abstracts, I then ran them through the machine learning software that was untrained. So I was using TensorFlow from Google, which is an open source machine learning system. And when it's untrained, it can classify an image as whatever it, it thinks it is. So when I ran this painting through, it actually called it a Christmas stocking, and it told me that there was a 40.908% chance that that's what it could be. So now that I relook at this the second time, you can see there's a red, something red coming down and something light colored on top. So you wonder if that's where it got the idea that it's, um, that it could be a Christmas stocking. The other one is over here. There was a 1.423% chance that this was a parachute. And you can see where it ha saw that um, um, half circle and thought it was a parachute. So it was, I was having fun with um, image classifiers and learning how they worked to create the series, but also having fun just creating abstracts for the sake of the abstract. And I'm going to come a little farther down. And when I mentioned that I created over 40,000 images with the software, I had a um, slideshow going on over in the corner where people could see that all of the things that were suggested. Because 40,000 is a number that people can't really think of. In a nutshell, that was my tour. Um, I know you want to see the robot that's behind, so I'm just going to close off the video looking at that. Um, one of my goals is for next year not to show any of this work, to create all new works. So hopefully you enjoyed what you saw here, and see you next year.